Hmm. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rekakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. And salutation to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing his word in all truth and sincerity. And the one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land wherever it goes. Shalom, everybody. Um, this is going to be a response uh, from two vocal, well, not two vocab Malone, but a just response about the video that vocab Malone has made. Uh, and this uh, called uh, Hurt People Trapped in Hebrew Israelism. Okay? So clearly he's talking about us, the so called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians who have waken up to the fact that we are indeed the lost 12 tribes of the, of the Hebrew. Of, of, I'm so lucky, the lost 12 tribes of, of Israel, man. So we're, we're doing this epistle through the Spirit, man. And I want to. Thank Yahweh Bashim Al Shai, first and foremost. But also, I want to put a shout out to GMS Encouragement, okay? Uh, I saw, I first saw this video on this brother's page, and it was, uh, so I'm gonna, uh, God willing, put his video in the description box as well. Uh, because, uh, you know, through the Holy Spirit, it brought this video out to light and uh, giving us a chance to do this epistle. Now, before we go on, I'm gonna play some of the video I'm gonna be stopping it along the way because I want once again I want to thank you about Shima Shai for this opportunity because you gotta understand now um, you know you can't do nothing against the truth but for the truth and we understand that the Lord is in all things okay and uh, this is his will for vocab alone to bring out this beautiful video okay I mean man this video when I first heard this video I'm like, bro, this is beautiful, you know, because he's actually coming out of his mouth and stating that we are, in fact, the lost 12 tribes of Israel. He doesn't know that, but that's the Lord done put that on him, man, and we're going to bring it out. We're going to bring it out because everything the man says actually backs up what we're saying, you know, seriously. Let's get a few scriptures before we start the video. Okay. Um, let me put this over there. The glasses on. Hold on. First, we're just gonna uh, go over the Second Corinthians, chapter five, verse eighteen. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Before we do that, I'm going to read, uh, no, no, let's, let's stay on, on task. So this is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18. And all things are of Yahweh Hashim Shai. Okay? All things of, 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 are of the Lord. Okay? So because the Lord is God Almighty, He made everything. Then we're going to jump over to the book of Proverbs, chapter 16, to back that up, verse 14. So, so like it. Uh, Proverbs chapter 16 verse 4 the Lord has made all things for himself yea even the wicked for the day of evil okay so the Lord has made all things for himself you know because this is this is the will of Yahweh Hashim Al Shai everything that happens on the planet earth you know in the heavens and on the earth is the will of Yahweh Hashim Al Shai okay thy will be done on heaven in heaven as it is in earth so this is his storyline. This is what's supposed to be happening. Vocab Malone was supposed to make that uh, video so we could do a response to it and bring out more edification, you know, of the truth. And, uh, you know, and it's, just, it's just gorgeous. It's just beautiful. Um, I want to also bring this out real quick, too, before we move on. And then we're going to just play the video straight away, okay? Back in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 11. It says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Yahweh Hashim al Shai. Okay? And if any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which Yahweh Hashim al Shai giveth. Okay? Because look, when we speak, 
We're not supposed to be coming out leaning on our own understanding and just talking with vain words. We're going to speak as the oracles of, of Yahweh Shema Shai, right? Because it's the Lord's word, okay, that's being made manifest. It's the Lord, the mysteries of the Bible here. We're bringing out uh, glorifying Yahweh Shema Shai, and He is the word. So, look, when we speak, we're not speaking our own words, our own opinions. We're talking about what the Lord has said, man. Making it come out to light, bringing it out to light. And that's what this is all about. And this man, you can clearly see in this little video that we're going to watch, brings out zero scripture. And the elders and apostles of Great Millstone has proclaimed that so many times. Right? This man just talk, 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 blah, 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 blah. No scripture. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So uh, I want to also make that clear. You know, hey, from the teachers of the elders and apostles of Great Millstone through the Holy Spirit. We don't come back to the one true living God, man, and understand that we are the lost 12 tribes of Israel. This video is a response, but it's also a calling out to the so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Letting y'all know that you are, in fact, the lost 12 tribes of Israel. Man, and right now, the Lord is doing a marvelous work on this earth. He's calling us back just in time to give us time to repent, to come back to Him before He comes back down and casts judgment on this wicked place. This society. Um, you know, and that's what we're proclaiming on the highways and hedges. That we will come back to repentance and to condemn this place, basically. Let, let everybody know who they are. Let Esau, Edom, the Caucasian race, know who they are. They are the wicked that the, that the, uh, the Bible uh, depicts them as. They are the devil, the deceivers. Okay? We are the good children of God. The so-called Negro, Hispanics, and name, and that's it. Okay, so look, let's play the video. And um, all praises to you. How about Shema Shai, right? Let's do it, man. It's gonna be, it's gonna be great. I'll tell you what causes me to empathize with people who are trapped in Hebrew Israelism. Okay, so. That was a short clip, man, uh, but I had to stop it right there because he said that uh, we um, are trapped, right? And when he said that, I, I thought about that movie, um, Get Out, right? Because he's saying that we're trapped. But that's not the case. We're not trapped because in the book of uh, John, you know, that... In the, in the movie, uh, Get Out, that brother was in a sunken place. They didn't want him, you know, they were, they, so they want you to be in a sunken place because understanding the truth, coming back to your true heritage and believing in, in Yahweh Shema Shai, who is the word, you understand who your enemies are. So therefore, you know, all things are made clear, man. You're, you're out of darkness now into his marvelous light. You, you're no longer deceived by the devil and all these lies and shit that they've been putting on us. Uh, you know, but, but he's saying that we're, we're trapped because he wants to keep us in that second place. But how about Shema Shah says in the book of John, chapter 7, verse 38 here, he said, wait, no, 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 Asalaki. Uh, John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So, on the contrary, we're not trapped. We're all. We're actually being made free, right? Now, let's. Uh, I just want to bring that point out because, and I don't. I don't want to spill off into too much uh, of other things. But there's so many other scriptures you can bring out. But I'm just gonna let, you know, go ahead, bring these things out, so we can get through this video. Cause it's not. It's. Not, I don't want to be a super long epistle. I want to be uh, quick and precise, and. Uh, because once you understand the truth, you know, if you believe this word, if you believe this response, and you've, you haven't heard about the Hebrew Israelites, and you are a, a so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, but also through the seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, um, the Israelite foreigners who may look like another, another nation, but if you believe this word, this doctrine here, you could be an Israelite. So if you hear this word for the first time, this epistle, uh, it is time for you to repent and start watching the videos and learn more you know about the Lord 
the one true living God, the God of Israel, you know, not this false God and false idols or this bullshit Christianity that they're trying to push on everybody or Allah and all this stuff. We're coming back to our true heritage, man, and that's what it's all about. So, once again, you know, the Lord said, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. This is the truth. Okay? Uh, the strip, because the scripture speaks about uh, not being a part of this world. You know? You're, you're supposed to be uh, separate, holy. You know, when you come into the, the truth, right? But hey, Christianity is all over the damn place. They're part of the world. They're intermingled with politics. Uh, they, they, they go against scripture. They, their doctrine teaches, you know, all bon a bunch of abominations. You know, everything contrary to the word of the Lord, which equals that they are of the world. So, you are the ones that are trapped by the wiles of the devil. Okay, you understand? So, let's get back to the video. It's, it's what I see. Let me explain. When I first ran across their videos, it was clear that they were upset. The, the videos I was watching, it was clear that they were angry. But as I learned more, it was clear that they'd also been hurt. <laughs> hey man, this, I, I, what did I tell y'all brothers? This is so beautiful. He said, it's clear that they were angry and they also been hurt, you know? Why? Because of all the things that we bought, we've been through as a people, you know, uh, and waking up to the truth, like we say, you should know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, man. And then uh, coming back to the full understanding of the scriptures, you know, knowing that they were actually written for us. Remember the Yahweh Hashem I shall say, hey, I'm gonna send you another comforter, you know, because I'm going away, but I'm gonna send you another comforter. I'm gonna give you, make sure you have the Holy Spirit give you that understanding. Um, you know, and they comfort each other with these words because you will be upset. You know what I'm saying? And and the scripture back this thing up, man. So vocab alone through the spirit of Yahweh Shem Al Shai, you know, because it's the will of the Lord, you know, that every creature is under his sub subjection and does exactly what he, he wants them to do. Just like he had Pharaoh oppress us, you know, the children of Israel back in the day. And just like now, he had he's got Esau Edom, which is thy sword, oppressing us until this day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just like he's got, you know, Vocab Malone, uh, being in, in, an adversary to the word so that we could get under edification, you know, as well, you know, in this, in these days, man, it's beautiful. So, uh, let's see, uh, that brings us from what he just said, you know, just to come bring it up. Uh, that brings us to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. It says, surely oppression maketh a wise man mad. Okay, and a gift destroys the heart. So yeah, when you wake up to the truth, you understand that we are, we've been oppressed, we're still being oppressed. And we know that we're here in our captivity. Uh, we know we're here in punishment. And this is the way that the Lord wants us to be so we can wake up and realize the wrong that we have done. And repent and come back to Yahweh Hashim Shai with the full heart, man, knowing and, and, and being so sorry. And still going through the curses, still under the subjection of Esau Edom, you know, and humbling ourselves, saying, Lord, now, you know, you know, can we come out of the room now? Just like a child. You know, you're on punishment. You can't watch TV. You gotta do chores. You know what I'm saying? Until until the parents are are are, are, are now satisfied that you understand what the hell you done did wrong. So yeah, surely oppression makes a wild man mad. So yeah, we, we are angry. We are upset. Mostly at ourselves now. And our, our, of our forefathers, our brothers and sisters that's still going off. You know, we're upset at, the, at, the, at, the, at Esau Edom for what they done did to us. Because they took it too far. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we, 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 we now know that we're here in our captivity. We know that we're nothing but enemies all around us. Here come the dogs licking our wounds. These other nations coming up in our our, 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 our neighborhoods and stuff, you know, uh, and, 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 and taking the little resources, the money that, you know, that, you know, instead of us being able to uh, prosper in our own neighborhoods, having our own stores, you know, and, you know, but this is our punishment. So, yeah, we're, we're upset. Yeah. This is the facts, Jack. But there's a civil lining at the end. Because Yahweh Shema Shai is going to come back and redeem us. Okay, but we're still in this flesh. 
even though we have this understanding, we're still men, you know, in this flesh. So we have emotions, we have feelings. Ain't, the, ain't everything not lovey dovey? Knowing that Esau Edom is still pr promoting and producing wickedness, that he's put these drugs and, 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 and guns and stuff in our neighborhoods to promote all this stuff that, that's befalling the children of Israel. But you want us to chalk it up, laugh, and talk about how much we love you and how much we want to be uh, damn equal to you and all that build bullshit. But we know that we're above you based on the scriptures. Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let's get some more. Let's get some more because it's, this is, a, uh, you know, all praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh, Shah! Boy, let's go to the book of Ephesians uh, chapter 4 verse 26. It says, be ye angry and sin not. Okay? Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So look. Ain't nothing wrong with being angry. You got emotions? Hey. Yeah, but, but the Esau Edom, they want you to be effeminate. You know? They want, to, they want you to be dumbed down. Okay? This Christianity, they want you to walk around talking about you love everybody. You know what I'm saying? Fuck that shit. You know, they want you to, to lick the ass of, of, your, of your wife. But we, now we understand the truth. We understand that uh, the wife is beneath the husband. She's a helpmate, you know. But Esau Edom done put her up in authority. You know what I'm saying? She's not supposed to be speaking in the church. She's not supposed to be wearing no damn pants wanting to be the man. So all these things, yeah, they get us up upset, okay. But look, the Lord said, uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 26 again. Be ye angry and sin not, because we're going to come back to the true understanding of, of the Lord, okay? So like I said before, just like that child in the room, still having to just, you know, go through that punishment, have to do the chores and wash dishes and all that stuff. They, Yeah, they be angry, but hey, you better not fuck up while you're going through this stuff. So, hey, we can be angry, but we, we this is the time to come back. To repent and and sin no more, you know. Do the vet, to the best of our abilities, you no. Know? Sin not, but you can be okay. You can be angry, yeah. But you should be angry at yourself, brothers and sisters. And that is with the fear of the Lord is going to get you through, keep you on that path of righteousness, okay? Because you don't want to, you don't want the Lord to be angry with you more. You want to appease Him now. So you know what I'm saying. And then let's get the let's, let's get the last scripture before we um, go back to the video. This is the book of Luke, chapter four, verse eighteen. It says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Okay, so thank you once again, Yahweh Shem Shai, because uh, Vocab Long just is showing it. He's just helping us to bring this, this, this truth out, man. You know what I'm saying? The Spirit of, of the Lord is upon me, because the Lord done called us out here to uh, proclaim these words, right? Because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Who is the poor? The so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, okay? All the other the uh, other nations are in our neighborhoods making money off us. They living good off the hog. You know what I'm saying? Esau eat them running the whole planet Earth. So the poor is us, the so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. Why? Because these these words are only for us. Okay. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. That's right. We're angry. What did he say? He's, what did what Vocab Malone say? We hurt? Yeah, we broken hearted, man. To preach deliverance to the captives. That's right, to let the captives know. The ones that are still under subjection to Esau Edom. The ones that got, got kicked out of their land. Everybody else got their land they can go back to. Not us. Because you, you done stole our land. Over there. Talking about you to Israel now. And, and now, ain't nobody, can't nobody say nothing against you. You know what I'm saying? It's messed up. So, yeah. You know, but we, we're preaching deliverance. To who? The captives. The ones that went to the transatlantic slave trade. The so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians that y'all had in subjection. In slavery, in captivity. Okay? Building up this country. But, but, but made no account for our labors, man. To preach deliverance to the captives and recover the sight to the blind. Okay? Yeah, because we, we run around here. You know, we understand that we're looking for the 144 hopeful elect and the one-third of Israel also. So, it's not all Israel. Not all so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians going to wake up to this truth. 
You know, because the Lord proclaimed that two thirds of our people will get cut off. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna repent. But the one third in the 144 hopefully elect of Israel, we're gonna come back. So this word is what and recovering and recovering of sight to the blind. You know, because we were in darkness, now we're in marvelous light. Now we was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I'm found. You know what I'm talking about? That's what we're talking about right here. And recover of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Yes, we are bruised, man. Beat down by the cops, shot in the back, not, can't get no damn decent job, getting kicked out your damn house, light bills, lights being cut off and shit all the damn time. You know what I'm saying? Downtrodden. Talked about. Ridiculed. Look at them niggas over there. Proverb and a byword. What? And to preach the acceptable year of Yahweh Shema Shai. Preach the acceptable year because look, the Lord said, and this gospel shall be preached on the four corners of the earth, then will the end come. So look, we're fulfilling, we're fulfilling prophecy, okay, by preaching this word that goes contrary and against the world with this Christianity and all this bullshit that they're trying to push, you know, these lies that they have been pushing on the, on the planet earth for all this time. But now, the truth that has been so long without fruit shall flourish, man. That's, uh... That's a that's an apocrypha, okay? That's a beautiful scripture, man. The truth that's been hid so long. We're proclaiming this truth. The acceptable year of our Lord, of the return of Yahweh Hashim al and That's what's going on right now. Okay, let's get back to the video. They've been hurt by their families a lot of times, by the system, by society, by institutions that they were supposed to be able to trust. They have been hurt a lot of times by people that were supposed to have protected them, hurt by the church, and a lot of times... They've been hurt by bad doctrine. Okay, so, uh, yeah, you know, just like, and that, what he was talking about just goes right on. And, you know, I, I hope everything's okay with me continuing to stop the video, but I must. It, it must, um, you know, uh, I'll, and you know what? I'll make it a point to actually put his whole full video in the bottom as well. While he's sitting around uh, proclaiming that we are the children of Israel, basically. Um... Because what he's what did he say at the end that that last clip I just played, um, you know that we've been hurt by doctrine, and that is the truth. Because what the Lord said we're gonna di be discontinued from our heritage. Our heritage is this doctrine. Okay, we were put in captivity, beaten. The 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 uh, our heritage was beaten out of us. What's your name, boy? Kunta. You know, he kept beating the man until he say, I'm changing your name to Toby. You know what I'm saying? So, just in likewise, the Hebrew Israelites, their name was changed to motherfucking some niggas, some black folks, some African Americans. Okay? That's, that's doctrine. And then you put, push Christianity down their throats, down our throats. I made a video a while back, uh... Highlighting the slave Bible. You know what I'm saying? Why? Why? Why they have a slave Bible? Because they're motherfucking devils, man. With this Christianity and shit. It's bullshit. It's lies. Because the scripture, uh, Psalms chapter 96 verse 5, clearly states that all nations, all gods of the nations, are idols. Right? So that right there, with any just the simplicity of of common sense, says to, lets you know that all the different nations have their own individual gods, and you can look and look it up, you know. But where where's the African American god then? The so-called African American god, huh? Where's the Hispanic god? Where's the Native American Indian god? Christianity has been pushed down their throat. This false god and false idol so-called named Jesus Christ. Who it happens and in fact is the Caucasian racist God. That's why he's Caucasian. Okay? But our real God is the God of Israel. Which in the book of Deuteronomy has skin of bronze that looks like just like us. Okay? Bam! That's right there plain. But let's get this scripture because I didn't want to 
go off too much, but I wanted to bring that out because he said we've been hurt by doctrine, right? So, but he's trying to say we've been hurt by the doctrine of the truth, which is uh, our heritage, which is the Bible, which are the words of the Bible, you know, in all truth and sincerity, without any lies, without any traditions of men, okay? Without the pagan holidays and all the paganism that they added to it, without the lies of uh, forgery or painting over the judges, you know, making them to be all the Caucasians. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, we've been hurt by doctrine because you come with you. You took our book when you sacked Jerusalem. You took it and twisted it around and turned it into Christianity and made it your own. But it's not yours. It belongs to us. Okay. And this is the book of Second um, Corinthians. You know, concerning what he said about um, hurt by doctrine. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I fear, least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. And we understand now that the serpent is Esau Edom, the Caucasian race. Just like in the Garden of Eden. He come around there telling Eve, hey, what did the Lord tell you not to eat this? Look, you, you shall not surely die. So you're going against what, what the word of the Lord is back then, doing it now as well. Okay? It says, but I fear least by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. Because he's sitting there uh, talking about he's got empathy for us that we done went astray and he's trying to uh, feel sorry for us. Let, let, me, let me try to call y'all back, you know, to the lie. Let me put y'all back in the sunken place. That's what he's saying, actually, because it's subtility. Okay. But I fear least by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Yahweh Bashim Hashai. Yeah, so they want to they want to beguile us, you know, to corrupt our minds once again, to get us into that Christianity, to get us to worship anything else except for the, the God of Israel, the 100% truth of the Bible. It says, For if he that cometh, okay, preaching another Yahweh Bashim Hashai, preaching another Jesus, okay, so if he come preaching another a false god and a false idol, talking about how uh, this so-called Jesus love everybody, come as you are, you know, do as thou wilt. The law, statutes, and commandments are done away with. You know, he's a Caucasian man. These are all contrary to the word of the Lord. You know, they're all lies. But if he come preaching that, it says, for if he that cometh preaching another Jesus, whom we have not preached. So the words. That's why the Lord say. You must uh, follow him. He's the word, right? You must believe in him. He's the word. So if anything that is not of the word, but it's some kind of man's tradition, tradition, or if they're leaning on their own understanding, or if they're even going off doctrine, you know, that's why the Lord said, my sheep hear my voice. You know, so every, not everybody's his sheep. And then he's also say, uh, uh, he's not of the world. This is, you know, and, and be ye separate from the world. And Christianity is all over the place. This is a small sanctuary. This is a remnant right here we're talking about. But let me not get off track. For if he that come and preach another Jesus whom we have not preached, because remember Paul and the apostles, they were ran around. They weren't preaching to the, the Romans. They weren't preaching to the Japanese people. They were went to the what? Go, but do not go in the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost 12 tribes of the house of Israel. You know what I'm saying? I was not sent only. I was only sent for the children of Israel. Well, that's the words of the Messiah, man. The Apostle Paul went to the Gentiles, the ones who had become uh, uh, Hellenized. Just like we were thought that we were um, African Americans. But we're not. We're actually the lost 12 tribes of Israel. He went in there preaching to the Gentiles, the ones who thought that they were Romans. You know what I'm saying? Just like we're coming preaching you know, to the captives, letting y'all know that you are, in fact, the lost 12 tribes of Israel. Same thing. So, but these people, these liars, talking about everybody has a place in salvation. So that's another doctrine, okay? They're saying that, hey, everybody's included in this. That's totally off. Because the Lord, you know, they're lying. They're blaspheming the name of the Lord. But it just it goes on and on and on. But hey, all praises to you. How about Shema Shah? They just open up our eyes to see this truth, you know? Uh, let's continue. 
For if he that come and preach another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received. And that's why, that's why the brothers are always bringing out that, hey, uh, this Christianity brings about another spirit, man. This worshiping, this false god and false idol, so-called name, Jesus Christ. That's another spirit. You know, that's not the spirit of the Lord. Because the Lord says it's okay to be angry and shit. You know? But these motherfuckers, they got a whole different spirit, man. It's not true. It's, it's, it's bullshit. It's lies. Or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye may well bear, bear with him. Right? Because he's saying, hey man, if you want to go ahead and follow them motherfuckers, get the fuck out of here. Because we're only coming out here for the, the, so, the, the hopeful elect, the 144 hopeful elect and the one-third of Israel. The so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. If you can't deal with that, you're not the Lord's sheep. If you can't hear this word, you're not the Lord's sheep. If you want to be a part of this world, you're not the Lord's sheep. Simple as that. Right? Okay, let's get the second one. Before we get back to the video. And this is the book of John, chapter 4, verse 23. And this right here uh, says so much, man. John, chapter 4, verse 23. But the hour cometh, and now is, man. Because the Lord came preaching that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Alright? And that was back so long ago, and now it is, it is at the door. Okay? Because we see all the signs happening. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers, okay, shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Uh-huh. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Yahweh Shem Al is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, my man. Not the traditional man. You're supposed to be holy. You're supposed to be separate. You're supposed to understand and know who you are. That's when you start to understand who the words are in the scriptures for. You know what I'm saying? And hey, can nobody? And, and, there's nothing that can separate us from the love of Yahweh Shem Al Shai, and that's scriptural, man. So let's get back to the video. Now, at this point, I've had lots of face-to-face -face encounters with a variety of Hebrew Israelites. Uh, public, private, sit down, everything. And more and more, I don't just see the anger or the hurt only, I, I see pain. There's a lot of pain behind the eyes of a lot of Hebrew Israelites. And they think they found the answer in Hebrew Israelism. I mean, even in times when I'm out there saying an intense street encounter, and they're looking at me, and some of these guys look at me, I'm just saying some. You know, like they were, they want to put a hurt on me, right? Even then, a lot of times, you can sense, if you have discernment, there's a lot of pain behind those eyes. Okay, so, yeah, and that's, that's a little bit more of that subtility. You know, he put a little jab in there. Oh, yeah, I see him. I, you know, some of them, you know, not all of them, but some of them want to hurt me, you know? Some of them, you know, what? Because well, he's what? He's pushing that bullshit lie uh, out there. Talking about, hey, everybody's supposed to be uh, bowing down to this, this nigga's feet because he's a damn cracker. You know what I'm saying? Hey, you're not being reasonable, man. You know, this is a blah, blah, blah. We, no, we understand now that what the words say. They say, hey, be ye separate. They, they say, walk, hey, walk away from a fool. So a lot of these dudes actually, you know, they going far above, you know, by even talking to this damn devil. You know what I'm saying? Because he's been around so many damn times, but he continues to, to damn, uh, but he's doing his job, though. But he continues to go against the word of Yahweh Hashem Hashem, to show himself how much is a non-believer he is. So for them to continue on, everybody knows who he's in. So for them to continue on talking to him, you know. Because, you know, I, I, if the dude come around me, I probably wouldn't even fucking say nothing to his ass. You know what I'm saying? Because what does it say? Uh, turn away from a fool. You know, if, if the motherfucker, he's a heretic. You know what I'm saying? After the first or second admonition, you know, um, leave the man be because he's a heretic. Because this truth is only for 
the so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, that's the 144 hopeful elect and the one-third of Israel that, that's going to hear and believe this word. The rest of the blind. What does the scripture say? Even the rest of Israel were blinded. The Lord, uh, the scripture, the, the scripture right, you're talking about, the Lord said the world cannot receive this. You know what I'm saying? So you'd be wasting your time, wasting your breath. Of course, some most, most brothers do it for edification of the rest of them. That's pretty much what it is. Just like I'm doing this video now. For edification of the children of Israel. The looking for the other, looking for this, you know, hopefully plant the seed so the Lord can give the increase to the 144 hopeful elect out there that, that, you know, that are out there looking for the truth. Just like I was, man. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 10. It says, never trust thine enemies. That's why some of the brothers, you know, looking at him like that. Because the scriptures say, don't trust your motherfucking ass, nigga. A lot of brothers think you're some kind of agent. You know, just to slander our name. You know, uh, bring doubt into the truth. But hey, what, like we said in the beginning, that is the job that the Lord, that's your lot. It says, never trust thy enemy, for like as iron rusteth, rust so is his wickedness. Okay, though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as, as if thou hast wiped the looking glass, and thou, sh thou shalt know that his rust have not been altogether wiped away, man. That's right. It says, Set him not by thee, least when he have overthrown thee, he stand in thy place. That's right. Just like, hey, he's going to try to put your ass back down in Christianity in that sunken place and rule over your ass continually. That's all. Least he seek to take thy seat, and thou at the last remember my works, words and be pricked there, therein. Okay? Who will pity a charmer that is bitten by a serpent? Or any such as come nigh wild beast. So that's right. That's why the Lord said, hey, stay, 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 stay holy. Get out there, preach the word. If they don't get it, shake the dust off your feet and move on. Simple as that, man. Nobody looking at you, man. Nobody thinking about you. They're trying to put uh, the brothers in, in a bad light time, as if, you know, they just run around, want to uh, pick fights or, or beat up somebody, you know, because, uh, because they're in a disagreement. No. This, and also, this is the book of uh, Psalms, chapter 83, verse 1. Keep not thy silence, O God. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O God. For lo, thine enemies. That's right. Yahweh Bashim al has enemies, and we, we are on one accord with the Lord. So that now they are our enemies, of course. They've always been our enemies. Why? Because we are the children of Yahweh Bashim al And they are under our, under our feet when the Lord comes back. They don't like this. That makes us our enemies. For lo, thine enemies make a tumult. And they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They hate the words of the Lord. Because they can't do what they want to do. Which is fucking wicked shit. Okay. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. And consulted against thy hidden ones. Okay. They have said come. Let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. They, they, they want us to stay. They want us to be niggas. These proverbs and bywords. They want us to be uh, Hispanics and Native American Indians worshiping a false god and a false idol. Their god, their idol. So they can tell us, you know, hey, no, you do they do it this way. This is the way to do it, you know. And and turn and get turn away from your Lord, so He will not protect you. Like the scriptures say, how the uh, Lord always protected the children of Israel when they did right by Him, man. Huh? Because we are the apple of His eye. They don't want that. You know what I'm saying? But this is all prophecy being fulfilled. Because we, the remnant, has returned. To Yahweh Shema Shai and doing things the right way, so he's gonna return unto us. He said, Return unto me, and I will return unto you, man. It says, They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, man. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. So all these other nations have done this all on one accord. That's why the children of Israel are scattered amongst all nations. And you got them, them uh, so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians in these other countries. They're still at the bottom. Still poor as hell. Still being oppressed. They're still brokenhearted and downtrodden, man. Okay, and, and, and at the bottom of this, it goes and tells you who they all are. The Tabernacles of Edom and the Israelites of Moab, the Hagarines, uh, Jabal, and Almond, and Amalek, and the Philistines, and the inhabitants of Tyree. Okay, and those are the 
the uh, so-called uh, Caucasian race, the, ja the Japanese people, the Chinese people, the uh, Arabs, the damn Africans. Okay? That's the name. Yeah, man. And that's, that's the truth, man. That's the truth of the scriptures. Let's play some more of the video, man. Some sad experiences I've had. Really, a lot of these sad experiences more come from dealing with ex-members of the Hebrew Israelism movement. And some even with people who are attached in some way, usually through family ties, to a current adherent. The reason why I say the stories come more from those groups of people is because a lot of the current adherents of Hebrew Israelism, they're relatively closed off to anyone they perceive to be an outsider. So you simply just don't know as much. Sometimes you can read between the lines, but you just you don't know as much. But when people come out, when men and women leave Hebrew Israelism, they want to tell their story a lot of times. A lot of times they don't. There's fear there. Don't get me wrong. But they usually become more open and vulnerable, and then you hear the stories, and it's tough. It's tough to hear some of these stories. Specifically, honestly, many of the women have been mistreated. I don't just strictly mean domestic abuse. That's not what I'm saying. However, honestly, sometimes that does pop up as a serious issue from time to time. Hey, man. Hey, brothers and sisters. What did I tell you? What did I... Uh, hey. What did I tell you, man? You see? I told you this, man. This... Yahweh Shai is bad, man. Yahweh Shai is God Almighty, man. I mean... Wow! You gotta give all praise to Yahweh Shai for this, man. Because, hey. This, this one video here. This one video... You know, that's when I heard this video, I was like, what? He said that? I said, oh, this is so beautiful, man, because, you know, the Lord said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, not no damn lies, not no traditions of men, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water, man, and this was, that's what this is going on. This is what this is. Hey, check this out. So look, what, what the man talking about here? These people... That uh well that was once a part of the ministry. Because listen, when you when you done come into this understanding of the truth, that we are the lost twelve tribes of Israel, man, and you under you really, really believe it, and you really understand what has happened, what's happening now, and what will happen, the you got the hey man, you got the fear of the Lord, unless it's the will of the Lord that you're that you're not a part of this ministry. Man, your ass is going to do everything you can to cleave on to Yahweh Shema Shai, man. Because, hey, we'd rather fall into the hands of the Lord than fall into these damn devils and shit, man. Because we understand now that these people are, are the devil. They're the most wickedest motherfuckers out here on planet Earth. They're deceivers. They're cutthroat. They're liars, just like the scriptures say. Ain't nothing around this planet, planet but wickedness. Okay? And we, we're hastening the day for Yahweh Shema to return. Okay? We don't like this place. This place sucks. You know what I'm saying? This is not no damn life. Being oppressed. Brother, you know, the Israelites being shot in the back. Killed in front of the cam camera. Still walk away scot-free. Break, you know, break in a nigga house. Shoot him in the damn house. And get a few days off. Damn judge, you know, get a few days off to relax and shit. You know, probably not, not, not in a no hard damn um, penitentiary or nothing like that. The damn judge hugging, hugging up on your ass. What well, that's unheard of? The fucking brother talking about some. I'm talking about Bottom John. The brother talking about he forgive you and he wish you didn't go to jail and shit for breaking in his brother's house and shooting his brother cold blood. Talking about you, you thought it was your house, boy. So if anybody come into this ministry and they get out because what the Lord say, uh. He have lost none that the Father had put in his hand. You know what I'm saying? You can't no man take him out of the Father's hand. So that's why this message is so, you know, it's, it's so powerful because it's only speaking to the so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians through the seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, okay? The lost 12 tribes of Israel. And that is the remnant, even. The hopeful elect. 
You know what I'm saying? This is not for everybody. The Lord said the world cannot receive this. Man, this is like right in your face of, of the mysteries of the Bible being opened up. Learning and understanding, getting to know the creator of the universe and all the plans that he's got made, laid out in the future. Dude, if you walk away from this and go back out there in that fucking nasty ass filthy shit of lies and cesspool of wickedness and abominations, then this scripture is for for this. This is the book of First First John chapter two verse nineteen. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Okay, if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not of us. Okay, so it ain't no skin off our back. That, that whoever you know whoever you talking about that went back out in the world and now you're making uh, videos about uh, Great Millstone, Elvis and Apostle Great Millstone coming against the word of Yahweh Hashem Shah, coming against this truth. You know, because you're not of us. You are not of us in the first fucking place. So look, let's go to the book of Matthew and look, hey, with all humility, I'm saying that because I'm hoping and praying to be one of the hopeful elect, okay? We're not saying we, we done made anything. We're just praying uh, for mercy from Yahweh Hashem Shah. We're trying to do everything we can to stay in this ministry. You know what I'm saying? To, 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 to keep our garments clean and unspotted with uh, the lies and the deception, with all these other false doctrines that be sprued all the way sometime. We put on, uh, holding the shield of faith, the, the quench the fiery darts of the wicked, just like this nigga here coming up here. But you know, hey, the Lord say, hey, if it was possible, they would deceive the hopeful, they would deceive the elect. But it's not possible, man. So you can bring it all day long because the scriptures speak for themselves. The word of the Lord speak for itself. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 34. Shit, did I did I set I hope that I set this thing back. Okay, 720. Uh I didn't want it to be that uh uh 1040 raw and then the file would be too big. Okay. So this is Matthew chapter 10, verse 34. Slocky about that. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. These are the words of Messiah. He said, I ain't come here to send peace, man. For I come to set a man at variance against his father and a and daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Okay? And look. This is what, uh, and this is what, this is what the lies that Christianity is talking about. Okay? Because they don't, they don't never talk about this. But when we come, when, when you come into the 100% truth, when you come into the understanding of the scriptures, what the Lord said, I did, I did not come to send peace on earth. So with them running around talking about, hey, you got to love everybody and all this stuff, that's a lie. They're going against doctrine. Okay? And the reason why the Lord's talking about, for I come to set a man at variance against his father and against his daughter, against his mother and against a daughter-in-law, against her mother-in-law. Okay? A man's foes shall be they of his own household. Why? Because everybody's not going to accept this truth. What did the Lord say? I, I, will, I will get you, I will get you uh, two by, what does it say? Um, one by city and two by family. So you're going to have members in your own household that don't believe this truth. And you're going to be like, hey man, what? I, I, I got to follow you. How about Shema Shai? Y'all listen to that bullshit uh, Christianity and all this, these lies that these devils keep pushing. That's, that's on you. But we're looking for salvation. We're looking for mercy. We're looking for hope. Because we believe in the one true living God. The one that said, I'm coming back to judge this wicked place, man. To judge this wicked kingdom. Okay? Let's continue on. Uh, no, let's just keep reading because uh, we're going to go all the way down to 37. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. That's right, because you got to give it all up to you. How about Shema Shai? And if, if, your, if your family members don't see that they don't understand the truth, they don't believe the truth, fuck them. Fuck them. Because now we understand life and death. We understand, uh, you know, a lot of things. So, you know, like the Lord said, my, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, you know. So we're on the one accord with Yahweh Shem Shai. So we understand these things. We understand that, listen, everything's going to be okay, man. Everything's going to be okay. 
And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Okay? So if your ass slide back into the world and now you want to start making uh, bullshit videos uh, against the truth, you're not worthy of Yahweh Hashem in the first place. Simple as that. You, you stand up there with that, with that devil up there and talk your shit about the Hebrew Israelites all you want. About your own brethren. Huh? Let's go to the book of Luke. Chapter 14, verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sister, yea, and his own life also. Huh? He cannot be my disciples. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciples. Okay? Because this means a lot. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciples. For which of you intended to build a tower, sit not down first, and count the cost, whether he has su sufficient to finish it? Okay? Because look, man, the Lord has declared his words from the beginning to the end. Okay? He made known to us. Starting with the elders and apostles of the Great Millstone and the other brothers on down under that umbrella. They come out here and teach these words and proclaim these words. And we hear these words, we learn these words, and in turn go out and teach them. And it tells, and it's speaking about salvation. Okay? It's speaking about the end of the world, the end of this age, Esau Edom's kingdom. Okay? It's talking about putting the, the Israelites, the so called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians up. And all the other nations down under them, under their subjection, as slaves. You know what I'm saying? This is big stuff, man. This is something you never heard before. This is the truth of the Bible, man. And that's what it's talking about, man. And this is just beautiful. So, it don't matter what these people say. It don't matter if they don't believe. Just like Romans chapter 3, verse 3 says, what if some don't believe? You know what I'm saying? Because this is only for the 144 hopefully elect. The Lord said, um... We're going to hear this, you know. Let's get it. Let's get Romans real quick. This is the book of Romans chapter 11, verse 7. What then? Israel had not attained that which is seeking for. So all these people that went back in the world, you know, all these people that still up in these churches uh, with this Christianity, worshiping this false god and false idol, so-called name Jesus Christ, they have not obtained what they seek it for, okay? But the election have obtained it, Okay? We are the hopeful elect. We have attained this truth, this wisdom, and this understanding, this knowledge. All praise to Yahweh Hashem through the power and the spirit of, of 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 the Holy Spirit, man. Through the teachings of of, of the elders, apostles, great millstone, and other brothers on down. Okay, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Okay, so there you go, right there, man. Let's let's watch some more of this video. Other things come to light. I mean. More in general, though, I'm talking about just spouses seeing their loved one transform radically before their eyes, devolve in a sense of not progressing. L let me explain what I mean. This is really from their own words. I've heard people describe their, their spouses do this. They go from happy, uh, joyful, uh, kind, fun-loving, that kind of person, to joyless rigid, judgmental, controlling, easily angered and offended, domineering, harsh, and yeah, bigoted. That's the kind of person they see them become a lot of times. That's what they express to me. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. You hear that? Um, so, yeah. And, it, and so he's talking about, um, you know, relationships. First of all, the scriptures say, don't, don't be dabbling in another man's marital affairs. You know, what goes on between the man and the woman is their business. You know what I'm saying? So, once again, it goes right back to they're, they're not of us. Because, hey, if they, if they knew that, they wouldn't be spilling the beans about their, their private relationships with nobody else in the first damn place. You know, unless it's a brother and, you know, you, and, you know just talking, you know, hey, brother, you know, whatever. Whatever. Um, but, yeah, yeah. Um, and also, what, what he's talking about goes back to what we were speaking about before. You know, 
It's okay to be angry. You're going to be changed. Once you understand this truth and you understand who your enemy are, you understand uh, what they've done to you, you understand uh, how we went off as a people, and now that we're in uh, c captivity, we've gone through, through the transatlantic slave trade, you understand reincarnation. You know what I'm saying? It's just so much. Uh, even though there's hope of salvation and, and knowledge of the, of the future and how everything's going to be alright, we're still in the flesh. Okay? Um, and plus, this is prophecy. This is the way it's supposed to be, man. But, once again, the lies of Christianity. Telling you, hey, you're supposed to be like effeminate. You're supposed to be happy all the goddamn time. All kind of bullshit like that. While you're going through all these uh, atrocities that's happening around the world, you, you send these damn devils, and you understand that they're the devil, and you understand how they run around in other, other people's countries doing all. What, what, does, what does the scripture say? When the wicked are in authority, the people mourn. But when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So we're looking for that day when the people are going to rejoice. But right now, we're mourning. And that's fine. So let's get some scriptures based on what he just said about this relationship status and all this stuff. Even though we just read um, about how you're supposed to be at variance and odds with, the, with your family members and stuff. But let's go deeper. Okay? Because he's talking about now uh, the, the, the spouse of seen, uh, the one that come into the truth change what the that's a good thing you're supposed to change you're supposed to put off the old man and put on a new man right but see Christianity don't teach you that because they're teaching another Jesus you know come as you are no you, you get your shit together and start doing things according to what Yahweh Shem Shai had put forth for us to do in the first place seek the old path man look this is the book of Romans Chapter 12, verse 1. I, be I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh Hashem Shai, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Okay? Holy. That means separate. You, you give everything up to Yahweh Hashem Shai Because what? Right now, the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. The whole duty of man is to serve Yahweh Hashem Shai when we come back to the understanding of this truth of who we are. Okay? Holy, acceptable unto Yahweh Shem El Shai, which is your reasonable service, right? Here's the point. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of Yahweh Shem El Shai. Simple as that. So, look, you know, your, your wife, well, speaking of myself even, when I first, when I came into the truth, man, I started saying, hey, man, you know, women should not be wearing pants. You're not supposed to exert authority over the man. On and on and on. You know, coming, we're coming back. We're being transformed. You know what I'm saying? We're not being a feminine. We're not being a pushover no more. We're standing firm. We're taking, we're uh, girding up our loins, so to speak. Taking control of our household, man. And what happens? What happens? You know, the Lord is going to be there for you, man. And he's going to start to pull you out of that thing. And if it's his will, just like it was for me, man, he get them damn nasty demons away from your ass. The people that don't want to uh, conform. And you become holy, separate. Sometimes the Lord will leave them in the house with you. But for, in my case, he took them away, man. And I was transformed, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's go, look, look, let's continue on. You're supposed to be transformed. He, they, they're talking about it as if it's a bad thing. Because we understand that this world is wicked. Let's go back to the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world. Right? Huh? Love not the world. Simple as that. Because why? The earth is given to the hand of the wicked. And all they're promoting is wicked shit. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So you either went down with this doctrine, with this 100% truth of the Bible. There's no straddling the fence. There's no lukewarm here. The Lord said, you, I wish you would be hot or cold. So you either went with the truth or you're not, man. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. 
For any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world, man. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of Yahweh Shem Asha abideth forever. So that's what we're talking about, and that's what we're fighting for here. Because we understand, when we're coming to the truth, that all this shit that you see around here is going to be passed away. But he that abideth with Yahweh Shem Asha, the ones that have been transformed by the renewing of their mind, that have turned away from this wicked world, that love the Lord more than the world, period, point blank. Abideth forever. Okay, and that's what we're looking for. Life. Everlasting life. Salvation, man. Okay? Now, before we get the before um, we go back to, to this video here, and there's only just a little bit more to go on that video, man. We almost finished. Uh, let's get one more scripture here in the book of 2 Corinthians again. Chapter 6, verse 14. It just simply says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Okay? For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what, communi and what communion have light with darkness? Right? So look, when you come into the truth, be, ye, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. So hey man, you're not going to be sitting around at the table with some damn non-believers all the goddamn time jaw jacking about some uh, vain, vain things. You know what I'm saying? You're not just going to be doing that no more. Because this shit going to piss you off. Everything that's coming out your mouth is going to be what? Living water. No, no. That's, that's you know, no, hey, that's that's not cool. You know. Oh, the Lord don't like that. Oh, no. They, them people are going off. Oh, look at them heathens. Look at them damn devils. Oh, that's a lie. That's You know what I'm saying? That's why you be holy, man. Be separate. Be at peace. Because that shit will drive your ass crazy sitting around with a non-believer all the goddamn time. And you're trying to, uh, every damn thing come out of their mouth is some abominable, abominable shit, man. Because of what the scripture say? And hate that abomination vehemently. Let's, let's find it. What's that scripture? And hate that abomination vehemently. One second. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I think it's this one. It's the Ecclesiastic Salaki. Let's just let's just bring this one out. Ecclesiastes chapter 15, verse 13. The Lord hateth all abominations, right? And they that fear God love it not. So look, like I said before, we are in one accord with Yahweh Hashem Shai. We don't like abominations. Okay? Abominations are all things that the Lord hates. Everything that goes contrary to the word of the Lord. Alright? And we love it not either. Because we don't want to quote with Yahweh Shem Asha. Simple as that. Okay, let's let's uh, continue on with the video. And they'll say things like, I don't recognize them anymore. I don't know who they are. They look more like their camp leader than my husband or my wife or my daughter or my son or even my mom and dad. This is sad. And there's also equally troubling stories about parents or family members basically trying to brainwash children into despising children or people in general of other ethnicities it's sad and what makes all this so tragic is that many folks they leave this thing and they just become absolutely distrustful of any religious claim of a spiritual leader of anything that's a holy book now or any message of faith you know this is how they would view it okay now um see Now he's trying to put another jab in there uh, as if we're promoting hate or something uh, simply because we speak the truth. And if we were to teach our children, hey man, you are, you know, you're the tribe of Israel, we don't know if the ch kids are going to get it or not. It's not like uh, brothers be like um, just drill this in, in p children's head, no. You know what I'm saying? 
because they're children. Now, when they get to a certain age, that's that's uh, that's up to them, you know, to pick it up if they want or not. And it's up to Yahweh Shem Al Shai that would call them in the first place. Okay, so look, never mind what it, what that man say, because the truth is right here in the scriptures. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art a holy people. So the Lord is talking about the so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. He's saying that we are holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay? So now look. This, this, this devil here will have you to believe that this scripture don't really mean nothing. Because they don't care about what the words of the Lord say. That's why the man now bringing out no scriptures at all. But we're with the, we're, we're, we're worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. Okay? So, hey, man, you're either with the Lord or you're not. And he's making it evident that he's not. But we're with the Lord. And the Lord said that we're above all people. So, uh, teaching your children that, hey, the Lord's going to come back. He's going to put these other nations under subjection to us. Right now, we're in our captivity. You know, we're, this is our punishment. There's nothing wrong with that, man. Okay? And look, let's, let's get it one more time just to make sure and to be clear. Because look, a nation, a nation is your nationality through the bloodline. Just because you live on a continent does not make you a nation of people. Okay? But that's, they, that's all the deception that they want to put out there as if to say, uh, you know, hey, no, we're all one nation. No. We're not all one nation. We are the, the nation of Israel. They're the nation of Edom. You know what I'm saying? The Chinese people are the Mo Moab, Moabites. Moab. That's another nation. On and on and on. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 1. Ye are the children of, of the Lord, your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. Okay? So the Lord is always telling us, hey, do this, do it this way, do it that way. Because what? We receive the law, statutes, and commandments, not anybody else. Number one. This verse 2, for thou art a holy people. So he's reiterating that we are a holy people. We're supposed to be separate unto the Lord thy God. The Lord has chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself. So we belong to Yahweh Shema Shai, the one true living God. Then he goes on to say, above all the nations that are upon the face of the earth. A salaki. Above all the nations that are upon the earth. Okay? So... What you got to say about that? No, no. Then they don't want to. They don't want to speak the truth. But look, we gotta speak. We gotta bring it out. We gotta bring it out. Let's get this one last strip here, and then we're gonna go right back uh, to finish up that, that that little video he got there. Uh, we're gonna go to Hebrews, cause he's talking about in the end of that little clip that he was talking about something about faith. You don't. You can't trust. Uh, once you come into this truth, then, you know, no, you should not trust all these other, other false doctrines out there, man. These other false religions because they're nothing but lies. You know, just like that, uh, once again, um, just like, uh, shoot, brain fart. Oh, Psalms chapter 96, verse 5. You know, all the gods of the nations are but idols, man. But the Lord made the heavens. Because all the other nations, all the gods of the other nations are nothing, man. They're but idols. The Lord made the heavens. Yahweh Shem Al Shai. The God of Israel made the heavens. The one true living God. That's why the scriptures say the Lord mocking these other gods. And they can't they can't breathe, they can't see, they can't eat. They don't do nothing, man, because they're nothing but wood and stone. Made with hands. You know what I'm saying? Man, this is beautiful truth, man. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Chapter 11 and 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Yeah, because we're hoping. We have faith. This is real faith here. Not no bullshit faith of some tradition that you done learned since you've been born. Of the world. This is something stepping out on a limb. Something that you never heard before. That has never been even spoken of before. Until recently when the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Back in one west. Brought this truth out to light. When the Lord declared it to be time when the books were open okay in the day of the last days man prophecy being fulfilled that's real faith okay now faith is is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen okay 
So because we, we hear the words of the scriptures, but we don't see it. We don't see anything. We we can read back in the book of Revelation chapter 1, verse 14, when it says the Messiah has skin of bronze. And in Daniel chapter 10, verse 5, when it says he's got skin of, of bronze, you know, bronze like us, brown skinned people. And then we can see that this Caucasian person that they put forth, so-called name Jesus Christ, they're promoting, saying that he's the Messiah. Saying that all of our forefathers are Caucasians. No other nations though. No, no, there's no Chinese, no Japanese, no Arabs in there mixed in there. All of them Caucasian. Suspect, right? Suspicious, right? Man, get out of here. But we now we understand now. So if y'all say they're all Caucasians, we're saying they're all Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> okay, shoot, man. Let's, let's watch more of this video. And they never want to get plugged back into some kind of institution, community like that. That means uh, they don't want to get plugged into a healthy church, really. It's like they're done. Some of these folks become extremely closed off to the gospel. Some even become atheists. So seeing these folks' response to getting burnt, it's just heart-wrenching. It's heart-wrenching. Because the gospel is the only source of hope. The gospel is the only source of healing. The gospel is the only source of redemption. And it's like Satan's had his way where he does something in their life that sears them and then they're cut off from even hearing the gospel because they view it as just another nasty message from this, this repressive book. Now, um... Shoot, I, I had to stop it one more time, brothers and sisters, because of what he's bringing out now. Uh, he's talking about, he's still talking about those ones that um, was once in the truth, but now they gone went back in the world. A, and like we brought up before, you know, they're they're not of us. You know what I'm saying? They were they weren't of us. So they actually, what's the scripture also say? Uh, he that believeth on me is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already. So they're condemned, man. They, I mean, because what the Lord said, he that uh, taking his hand off the plow looking back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. And it's simple as that. All right? So these people are gone, man. And that's, that's why uh, we fear the Lord and we pray, just like King David, that the Lord don't take his Holy Spirit off of us, man. He don't, he don't kick us out of the truth, man. We're holding on for dear life, brothers and sisters, because we f actually fear Yahweh Hashem Hashem. And let's get this scripture right here before we go back. This is the book of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, which is now, some shall depart from the faith. Okay? They're going to go back in the world, man. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So you got you to start listening to bullshit and slowly get sucked back out there, man. And then you're going to be out there looking, looking damn stupid. Okay? Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, man. Because now you can't you can't get back in, man. Can't get back in. You done, you done, you know, it's fucked up, man. And we hoping not to be a part of that number, man. We want to be a part of the 144 hopeful elect and the one-third man of Israel. Who will endure until the end. Endure uh uh, all the wickedness of the world endure going through all these things with our family mem members but still holding on to the faith you know uh, endure uh, the oppression un un endure the, the, even the, the own very flesh you know trying to trying to uh, go after the lust thereof you know but the spirit inside want to do the will of Yahweh about Shema Shai you know, we're longing for to be connected back to the Lord. Okay? So, but we have to endure to the end, man. This is the story. This is the, this is the, these are the conditions of the battle. Now, let's get back to the video and wrap it up, okay? Now, that none of that's true, but that a lot of times can become the reception, the, the perception. And we praise God, though, for folks who have left. And they were not closed off to the gospel and have become believers and followers and disciples of Jesus Christ since then. So not all the stories of ex-members are just sad.
Okay, so uh, yeah, he he finally finished, man. He just wrapped up with uh, something about the damn ones that turned away from the truth to go back to the sunken place to worship this false god and false idol, so-called name Jesus Christ, the one we've been talking about um, the whole time. You know, there's other this difference between truth and lies. Okay. Reality and falsehoods. That's all pretty much what it is. Good and evil. That's what it is. So he talking about these people that went back in the world. You know, he's so happy. Not bringing out not one scripture. So look, let we look. We're gonna we're gonna close it out ourselves, but I got a few scriptures here just to close it out with. Okay, because the word is alive and well. You how about Shema Shai? Uh he is the word, remember? So, and what did the Lord say? Let's go to the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 28, verse 20. Well, let's, well, let's go uh, Matthew, chapter 28, verse 18. And Yahweh Shai came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Okay? Because uh, Yahweh the Almighty is going to give all power to Yahweh Shai, His Son, to have Him. He's going to rule, rule over this, rule, rule over this, man. You know, all power. It says, "Go ye therefore and teach all nations." So the Lord's telling, telling His disciples, telling the men of the Lord, huh? You know, the preacher, you know. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, because the children of Israel are scattered amongst all nations, man. You know, but we're looking for the whole 144 elect. The Lord's sheep and the one-third of Israel through the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not the bloodline of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Okay, <laughs> that's a, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the brother Malcolm uh, brought it up the other day. I asked him if I use it. Now, you know. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of Yahweh, Shemel, Shai, and in the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Right? So we baptize you with the truth. That's why you're supposed to speak as the oracles of Yahweh, Shemel, Shai, with the word of the Lord. It says, teach, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. So teach them everything that's in the scriptures, man. Teach them that you the you the the, the nation of Israel, the so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, just like uh, we brought out Deuteronomy 14. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You are the chosen nation. And the Lord has chosen you, right? And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. So the Lord said he's with us always. Why? Because he is the word. Okay? He is the word. He's the, he's the scriptures. And what? He said, even until the end of the world? What, what, what is he even talking about, the end of the world? Well, we're going to find out what the end of the world is talking about right here. This is the book of uh, Second Ezra. And we're going to get straight to the point. Second Ezra chapter 6 verse 8. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, When Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. So Jacob is the children of Israel, the so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. that represent that. Esau is the Caucasian race. And he's the one that's ruling this wicked world right now. Okay? For Esau is the end of the world. So this is the end of Esau's kingdom. His rulership. Because the Lord is going to come back and put all the kings of the earth under his foot. And that would be Esau Edom. Okay? For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followed. That's why the Lord said, I'll be with you until the end of the world. Then he's going to come back and be physically with us, man. Huh? But he's still with us with this word right here. Oh, let's get one more. This, so this is the last scripture right here. And we're going to close it out. This is a book of Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 5, verse 1. So we are fulfilling prophecy, brothers and sisters. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness. Okay, because he was talking about, you know, how these brothers on the highways and hedges are, uh, you know, sometimes they look at him like he's, you know, uh, we stand in great boldness, man. Stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. Okay? In front of these crackers, man. These ones that put, try, put us to the transatlantic slave trade. The one that's still oppressing us to this day. We're standing in great boldness. 
in the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. You know what I'm saying? When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Okay, so now they scared, man. That's why they're going against the, the, the word of the Yahweh Hashem al Trying to denounce that we are the Hebrew Israelites. Trying to convince us to get back in that sucking place, nigga. When they see it, when they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Okay? So far beyond all that they look for. And the salvation is beginning now by the Lord waking us up to this truth. Just like we read about in the book of Psalms chapter 80, 83 verse 1. When the nations come together to make a tumult. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. You know what I'm saying? But we are now waking up to the truth that we are the lost children of Israel. No matter all that shit, all the lies they're not trying to put out there to proclaim that we're not, man. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, This is this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb and a reproach. That's right, you niggas. You Native American Indians, you Hispanics, you so-called African Americans. We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. Yeah, they see us out there preaching the word, but hey, see, because this is not for the world to receive. The Lord said the world cannot receive this understanding, this truth. So they're going to believe that y'all just preaching some nonsense, man. But at the end, they're going to say we fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of God and his lot is among the saints, man? So, with that, hope this was edifying, brothers and sisters. Uh, I want to thank you all about Shema Shai once again for putting the spirit on me to bring out this epistle. I hope it was edifying. Uh, we want to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rekakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. For teaching us everything we know, man, through the power and spirit of Yahweh Hashem Al Shai. Salutation to the 144, hopefully elect, pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, and the one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land wherever he goes. Shalom, Israel. Shalom.